During the 1960s and late 70s, Australia produced some of the most compelling muscle cars on the planet. However, many of these iconic models have faded into history but remain cherished by enthusiasts and collectors. 1. Holden Tirana A9X The Holden Tirana A9X, introduced in 1977, is a legendary Australian muscle car that left an indelible mark on the nation's automotive history. Its development was driven by Holden's ambition to dominate the Australian Touring Car Championship, ATCC, and the iconic Bathurst 1000 race. Because of this, the A9X variant of the Tirana series was designed with racing in mind. It featured a robust 5-litre V8 engine, capable of producing 164 kilowatts at 4,800 revs per minute and a torque of 406 Nm at 3,100 revs per minute. This engine, combined with a lightweight body, provided an impressive power-to-weight ratio that made the A9X a formidable competitor on the track. The car's aerodynamic design, characterised by flared wheel arches and a rear spoiler, enhanced its stability and handling at high speeds, crucial for racing success. One of the standout features of the A9X was its innovative rear suspension setup. Unlike its predecessors, which used a standard live rear axle, the A9X was equipped with a heavy-duty Salisbury axle, four-wheel disc brakes, and a unique rear floor plan designed to accommodate the new suspension. This setup significantly improved the car's handling and braking performance, giving it an edge over its competitors in demanding racing conditions. The Holden Tirana A9X's success on the racetrack is legendary. It achieved remarkable victories, including winning the Bathurst 1000 in 1978 and 1979. These wins were instrumental in cementing the car's reputation as one of the greatest Australian muscle cars. Legendary drivers such as Peter Brock and Jim Richards piloted the A9X to these victories, further adding to its legendary status. Production numbers for the A9X were limited, making it a rare and highly sought-after vehicle among collectors and enthusiasts today. Only 405 units were produced, split between 305 sedans and 100 hatchbacks. This limited production run was primarily due to the car being a homologation special, a requirement to qualify for racing under Group C regulations. The rarity of the A9X has only added to its allure with well-preserved examples fetching high prices in the collector car market. The A9X was also notable for its street performance. Despite its racing pedigree, the car was drivable on public roads and offered a unique blend of power and practicality. It featured a stripped-down interior, focused on weight reduction and performance, yet it retained enough comforts to make it a viable option for everyday use. Two Chrysler Valiant Charger E49. The Chrysler Valiant Charger E49, a high-performance muscle car produced by Chrysler Australia in the early 1970s, stands out as one of the most impressive and fast-accelerating vehicles of its era. Its introduction was a bold statement by Chrysler, showcasing the potential of Australian engineering and performance. The Charger E49, with its distinctive coupe design and powerful engine, became a symbol of speed and power, capturing the imagination of car enthusiasts and racers. Under the hood, the Charger E49 was powered by a formidable 4.3-litre 265 Hemi six-cylinder engine. This engine, known for its durability and high performance, was capable of producing 302 horsepower and 433 Nm of torque. The engine's design included triple Weber 45 DCOE carburetors, which significantly boosted its performance capabilities. This setup allowed the E49 to achieve remarkable acceleration times, setting it apart from its competitors. In fact, it was the fastest accelerating six-cylinder production car in the world at the time, reaching 62 mile per hour in just 6.1 seconds. The E49's performance credentials were not limited to its engine alone. The car featured a robust four-speed manual transmission, which was designed to handle the immense power generated by the Hemi engine. 
The combination of the engine and transmission allowed the E49 to deliver a seamless and exhilarating driving experience. The car's suspension system was also upgraded to enhance handling and stability, making it fast in a straight line and agile around corners. The car's lightweight body and powerful engine made it a dominant force in various racing events. It set numerous records and won several championships, further cementing its legacy as a top-tier muscle car. The E49's racing pedigree attracted a loyal following, and it became a favourite among drivers and fans who appreciated its raw power and performance. The exterior design of the Charger E49 was as striking as its performance. Its sleek aerodynamic shape, bold stripes and aggressive styling made it a head-turner on the streets. The car's distinctive look was complemented by its performance-oriented features, such as the front and rear spoilers, which improved aerodynamics and stability. The interior of the E49 was designed with the driver in mind, featuring a functional and minimalist layout that emphasised performance and control. Despite its impressive performance and racing success, the Charger E49's production run was relatively short, making it a rare and highly sought-after collector's item today. Only 149 units were produced, which has only added to its mystique and desirability among classic car enthusiasts. Three, Ford Falcon XA GTHO Phase 4. The Ford Falcon XA GTHO Phase 4 is one of the most celebrated Australian muscle cars, meant to be the ultimate iteration of Ford's high-performance GTHO series. Conceived in the early 1970s, it aimed to build on the success of its predecessors, the XW and XY GTHO Phase 3, which had already established a formidable reputation on the racetrack. However, its story remains incomplete due to the infamous supercar scare that abruptly halted its production. In 1972, the Phase 4 was poised to dominate the touring car championships, particularly the renowned Bathurst 500. The car was built with a robust 5.8-litre 351 Cleveland V8 engine known for its immense power and durability. This engine, coupled with a close ratio four-speed manual transmission, promised unprecedented performance on the track. It was designed to produce around 380 horsepower, making it one of the most powerful cars of its time. The engineering team focused on refining every aspect of the car, including its suspension and braking systems, to handle the increased power and provide superior handling and stability at high speeds. The XA GTHO Phase 4 also featured several modifications to enhance its aerodynamics and overall performance. These included a front spoiler to reduce lift at high speeds and improve stability, and a larger fuel tank to accommodate the demands of endurance racing. The car's interior was stripped down to reduce weight, emphasising its racing pedigree. Despite these performance-oriented changes, the Phase 4 maintained the distinctive styling that characterised the XA series, with its bold lines and muscular stance. However, the Phase 4's potential was never fully realised. In June 1972, an article in the Sun Herald sparked a public outcry over the so-called supercar scare. The article raised concerns about the safety of high-speed vehicles, particularly in the hands of young, inexperienced drivers. This led to intense scrutiny from the government and public forcing Ford, along with other manufacturers like Holden and Chrysler, to abandon their high-performance projects. As a result, only four XA GTHO Phase 4 prototypes were ever built, one road car and three race cars. Despite its short-lived production, the Phase 4 left a lasting legacy. The three race cars were intended for homologation purposes to compete in the Group E series production touring car racing and they showcased the peak of Ford's engineering capabilities. The lone road car, a true rarity, became one of the most sought-after collector's items in Australian automotive history. The Phase 4's scarcity, combined with its legendary status, has driven its value to extraordinary heights, 
with one example reportedly selling for $1.75 million, setting a new record for an Australian-made road car. The Ford Falcon XA GTHO Phase 4 remains a symbol of what could have been, a car that was set to redefine performance standards in Australian motorsport but was curtailed by external pressures. Its brief existence and the circumstances surrounding its demise have only added to its mystique, making it a fascinating chapter in the history of Australian muscle cars. Four, Holden Monaro GTS 350. The Holden Monaro GTS 350 emerged as a flagship muscle car during the late 1960s and early 1970s, representing a significant chapter in Australian automotive history. This vehicle, with its American-inspired design and robust V8 engine, captured the hearts of car enthusiasts and became a significant part of Australia's automotive heritage. The Monaro GTS 350 was equipped with a potent 5.7-litre Chevrolet V8 engine, which was the centrepiece of its appeal. This engine, known for its reliability and impressive power output, produced 275 horsepower and 488 Nm of torque. Such specifications enabled the GTS 350 to deliver remarkable performance on the road, with acceleration from 0 to 60 mph in just over six seconds, making it one of the fastest cars of its time. The engine was paired with a four-speed manual transmission, which provided smooth and precise gear shifts, further enhancing the driving experience. Holden designed the Monaro GTS 350 not only to perform, but also to turn heads. The car's exterior featured bold and aggressive lines, with a distinctive front grille, dual headlights, and muscular fender flares that emphasized its performance capabilities. The sleek coupe profile, complemented by racing stripes and GTS badging, conveyed a sense of speed and power even when standing still. The aesthetic appeal of the Monaro was undeniable, and it quickly became a favourite among car enthusiasts for its looks as much as its performance. Inside, the Monaro GTS 350 offered a driver-focused cockpit with sporty touches, enhancing the overall driving experience. The interior featured bucket seats with unique upholstery, a sports steering wheel, and a comprehensive instrument cluster that provided vital information at a glance. While emphasising performance, Holden ensured that the Monaro did not compromise on comfort, making it a practical choice for everyday driving and spirited runs. The Monaro GTS 350 quickly became a symbol of Australian muscle cars, competing directly with rivals like the Ford Falcon GT. It was not just a car for the road, it was also designed for racing, participating in various motorsport events, including the Australian Touring Car Championship. The GTS 350's racing pedigree helped to solidify its status as a serious performance vehicle, appealing to both car enthusiasts and casual drivers. Its success on the track and in showrooms contributed to the Monaro's legendary status in Australian car culture. Despite its popularity, the production of the GTS 350 was relatively limited with only around 415 units produced. Enthusiasts and collectors continue to celebrate the Monaro's achievements on the track, and it remains a sought-after model in the classic car market. Five, Ford Falcon XY GTHO Phase 3 The Ford Falcon XY GTHO Phase 3, introduced in 1971, is often hailed as the pinnacle of Australian muscle cars. This vehicle was a blend of raw power, sophisticated engineering, and unrelenting performance, making it a legend on the road and racetrack. The Phase 3's legacy is deeply rooted in its design, which was specifically tailored for high-speed touring and competitive racing. 
At the heart of the Falcon XY GTHO Phase 3 was the formidable 5.8-litre Cleveland V8 engine. Although officially rated at 300 horsepower, it was widely believed to produce much more, with estimates often suggesting figures around 380 horsepower. This engine was mated to a four-speed top-loader manual transmission, which allowed for precise and rapid gear changes, essential for both street performance and racing. The powertrain's efficiency was further enhanced by a 750 CFM Holly four-barrel carburetor, which ensured optimal fuel-air mixture for maximum power output. The Phase 3 wasn't just about straight-line speed. It was engineered to excel in handling and stability as well. The handling option, HO package, included a stiffer suspension setup, heavier-duty springs and unique shock absorbers all designed to keep the car planted on the road during high-speed manoeuvres. Additionally, the car featured a 9-inch Detroit Locker differential, which provided excellent traction and durability, especially useful in racing. The exterior of the Phase 3 was as aggressive as its performance. It sported a functional shaker hood scoop that directed cool air directly into the engine, enhancing its breathing and efficiency. The front and rear spoilers were not merely aesthetic additions, but functional components that improved aerodynamics and high-speed stability. The bold stripes and distinctive GTHO badging further distinguished the Phase 3 from its competitors, making it an unmistakable presence on the road. Inside, the Falcon XY GTHO Phase 3 featured bucket seats that provided comfort and support during spirited driving. The dashboard was equipped with a full set of gauges, including a tachometer, ensuring that the driver had all the necessary information at a glance. The interior trim, while functional, also added a touch of sophistication, balancing the car's aggressive exterior with a refined cabin. The Phase 3's prowess was most evident on the racetrack, particularly at the 1971 Bathurst 500. This event cemented the car's reputation as it dominated the competition with Alan Moffat driving a Phase 3 to a decisive victory. The car's success at Bathurst and other racing events contributed significantly to its legendary status, showcasing its capability to excel in most demanding conditions. Today, the Ford Falcon XY GTHO Phase 3 is one of the most sought-after collector cars in Australia. Its rarity, historical significance and unmatched performance have made it a prized possession for enthusiasts. The few surviving examples often command high prices at auctions, reflecting their status as automotive icons. These Australian muscle cars may have faded from production lines, but their legacy lives on in the hearts of car enthusiasts. They symbolise a golden era of automotive performance and innovation in Australia. Their impact on car culture and racing history ensures they will never be forgotten.